you think about it, section 10.2, the one we just did, doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense. I mean, how is it you know the mean, but you don't know what the standard deviation, excuse me, vice versa, you know the standard deviation, you know sigma, but you don't know what mu is. I mean, how does that make any sense? The answer is, well, it really doesn't. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you another problem. Um, this is from the next section, 10.3. In these sections, it's a little bit more realistic. This is more what actually happens if you're doing an interval for the mean. Um, we do the other thing for a reason. We basically want to teach you a method, but um, it doesn't really make a lot of sense as a method. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in, using stat edit, um, all this data. This is the age of, or excuse me, the weight of different state quarters. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to pause. Okay, magically, they're all there. There they are. Okay, then it wants us to conduct a hypothesis test. Basically, um, we want to determine whether the new state quarters have a different, see that, different weight than the old value of 5.72. Okay, so we know what the null and alternative hypothesis are going to be. We know that it's H0 is, oh, I better do it in math type so you guys can see it. H0 would be that mu is equal to 5.72, what it used to be. The alternative to that is different, which would be mu is not equal to 5.72. Okay, there's your hypotheses right there. You know that alpha is 0.05. Okay, that's step two. And then it wants to test statistic. But the deal is that you don't know sigma. You were never given sigma in this problem. So what are you going to do? Well, you can't treat this data like it's a population, so what you could do is use the sample. But if you use sample data, sample standard deviation, then you don't have the power of the normal curve. And you're stuck doing the t-curve like you did in chapter 9. And that's what we're going to do. So go to stat, go to tests, pick number 2. See that? t-test. When you don't have sigma given and you're doing a test for the mean, which we are here. See, the mean is in the null and alternative right there then you're doing a t-test when you're doing the mean but sigma is not given to you anywhere in the problem which it wasn't in this case so I pick number two I had data for this problem right I typed in a whole bunch of data in L1 so I'm going to keep data but my mu zero is 5.72 it's still L1 it's still one it's still mu zero not excuse me, not equal to mu zero it's, it's a two-tailed test because they said different All right. So I'm going to press enter, and there we go. The test statistic is t equals negative 1.519. Okay. Then look at your p-value. Right, p-value is 0 0.147. Okay, so if you've got to do the classical method, which we do here, you're going to compare that t-value to your t critical value. Now your t-critical value you're going to get from doing second distribution inverse t 0 0.025 half of 0 0.05 because remember this is a two-tailed test so you got to split the alpha in half right half for each tail oopsie I forgot about it. comma degrees of freedom well that's 17 right there were 18 in the in the sample Right, the sample was, oops, you can see it right there, n was 18. So the degrees of freedom is 17. Enter. Okay, so the critical value is plus or minus crit value. And again, I'm not doing this the way we would do it by hand, right? Um, when we do it by hand, we have to show a lot more of the work. So there's two critical values, plus or minus negative 2.105, right? Excuse me, positive or negative. If negative 1.519 was lower than the negative one, we would reject, or higher than the upper one, we would reject. But it isn't, right? We do not reject H0 because this guy is greater than the two point, negative 2.105. Okay? Or another way to see it, look at your p-value. P-value you reject if it's low, but your p-value is higher than your alpha. So therefore, you do not reject H0. Just on a side note, if you don't reject with the classical way, with these guys, then you won't reject with the p-value way and vice versa. So you either reject both times or you don't reject both times, but you can't mix and match. All right, see you in for next time.